Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is episode 98 in our React series, so we've come quite a way, but this video, we're actually gonna take a quick break from what we've been doing and actually take a moment to look at types. So we've actually introduced a few issues into our code as we've been moving things around, and I want to actually add some TypeScript into our code since we've been using any, which sometimes I'll start with that, but I usually like to end with a type. We're also gonna be taking a look at object ID for nested items, which can be a little bit challenging in our situation. So if you want to use nested object IDs, I'll be showing you how to do that in this video. Some of the type stuff will be spread out into the next video, so definitely stay tuned for that as well. And before we get too far into this, I wanna give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor. Please check them out if you wanna support this channel. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So here we are on this commit with this hash, and one of the problems we've introduced is if we say npm run build, we get some errors that we may not have seen with npm run dev. And this is all from introducing the concept of orders to our customer. So we've defined a customer somewhere in our code. I believe this is found inside of pages and then inside of the customers page for the index.tsx. So this is the page to get all of the customers and that is where we defined our type. This could obviously be defined anywhere else. You know, maybe it's a file dedicated to types or within a folder dedicated to types. That's not really the point of this video. The point is we added orders here, which is an order array. However, some areas of our code are trying to adhere to this type, but are not quite matching this format. So when you introduce a new type, first off, you have to think about, are all the customers going to have an array of orders? If not, then I'd mark this as optional. So we can put a question mark here to say that the orders is not required on a customer. This makes sense because if you take a look at our application, we have customers and oftentimes a order will exist for a customer, but other times that won't be the case. So it just makes sense to mark that as optional. Now, this will at least fix that problem that we're getting from another file, because basically we're working with an object with two properties, name and industry. So when we say npm run build now, we're no longer getting that problem. However, we could use this type to our advantage and actually type our API a little bit better. So taking a look at our customer's API for Let's go ahead and take a look at this one first. So this is if we wanted to add a new customer, you can see that function here, add customer. This should be good, but it's actually not as good as it could be because it takes the name and industry, but it's not going to take an array of orders. So if we wanted, we could say orders here and say rec.body.orders. To test this out from the customer's API endpoint, we will post. But before we do that, let's go ahead and retrieve our data so that we can see an example structure. So I will copy this customer here. That way I can easily make a body. We will remove the ID, which should be auto-generated. And then we're gonna talk about the ID for the nested items in a second. So let's just go ahead and make sure we have valid JSON here. And this part's optional, but I'm just going to unindent that so it looks a little bit better. And let's just go ahead and change this to Johnny and we'll just keep everything else the same. And these tags, I was just experimenting with tags. You don't have to have that in our example here. So this is what it'll look like, a name, industry, and a list of orders. So let's go ahead and post this data. So we'll submit this data. We get an object ID back, which we can take. And in a new tab, we will get this object ID from customers slash ID hitting get. You can see we have a new customer in here with an auto-generated ID, a name, industry, and an array of orders. So that works. You should be able to go to your site now and see Johnny Smith here, and you should be able to view those orders. But uh-oh, we have a problem, which is essentially going back to that ID I was referring to. So when we created this, we didn't pass in any ID. And with the default behavior, the ID is not going to auto-generate. So what we can do is we can add an ID to each of these orders or modify our code so that it's only optionally displayed inside of the order table. So let's go ahead and go with that first option. What we will do is instead of assigning request.body.orders, we will say request.body.orders.map. And this will allow us to return a new array of orders. So we'll define a parameter here, 
order, and this will be of type order, which we can import. Actually, I think we're good. So that is from right here. This is what that type looks like. And then what we'll do is we'll just return a new object with that ID. So underscore ID is going to be a new object ID from MongoDB. So showing you those imports real quick, this is what they look like. Oh, that's not right. There we go. Cool. So now that'll be a function call. It's a constructor, so we'll say new. And we'll also include everything else that was on the original order. And it's complaining because of the ordering of this. So if we take this and put it on the left, and then we will assign an ID. If it happened to have an ID, it would replace it with a new object ID, but we're not going to have one because this is a post request for a new customer, but that's what that syntax problem was about. All right, so now let's go through that same example. So what we'll do is we will go back to Postman. We can probably just use the same example, Johnny Smith number two, put that inside of the quotes there. Hitting send, taking this new ID, and retrieving that, you can see now the order has an ID on it. And we shouldn't get a weird problem in the database, so let's go back to our customers, hit Johnny Smith 2. Okay, and there we go, it works. I did get the error initially for a moment, and I actually went and deleted the incorrect record from our database. So now we only have Johnny Smith number two. And now when we view all of our orders, this is what it looks like. Now I actually have a similar problem when it comes to editing a customer, so let's go look at the parameterized API endpoint. So over under API and then customers, we will get this one here. And we're specifically interested in the put so very similar concept here. We will say orders, which is going to be request.body dot orders. That's all I got in this video. Hopefully this was helpful even if you just watched it and you didn't have these same exact problems. What we'll be doing in the upcoming episode is talking a bit more about TypeScript and how we can type our new orders page. So stay tuned for that video. I think it'll be fun. Maybe. Guess you just have to find out. So thank you for watching. Peace out. Be sure to subscribe.